Friday night racing on Off the Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Go Racing. Plan your day at the races at goracing.ie. Are we there? Yeah, what did we do there? Why did that do that? We're Why live. did that do that? Uh, hello, we're here with uh, Kleena Foley. Who's uh, are we back, Kleena? I'm struggling with my mic here. Uh, we we're just talking about how great it was to be on the radio. And that was uh, without that was, the technical issues. We were talking about Connor sketches here, and he's done a little uh, thing online. Um, did a little kind of impressions of all. I've never seen somebody do impressions of racing people before, but typically Connor has nailed it. And I'm on Twitter here, and the first three things in my timeline are links to Connor's sketches from people across racing. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's certainly worth a look. It, it, they are brilliant. I mean, we know he can do golf and he can do GA and he can do lots of things, but his racing ones are pretty good as well. Welcome to Friday Night Racing. We hope we have our technical issues sorted out. Uh, I'm here with Johnny Ward, and on the phone we have Nina Carberry. He hasn't done Nina Carberry yet on that, has he? No, Nina wouldn't be the easiest to do an impression of now. Nina's, um, <laughs> I, I, but I'd prefer to do an impression of her than Paul now, in fairness. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Nina? In life and I, in, in impressions. I think just, uh, just give me a Photoshop, I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, we've been trying to, we've been, we've been uh, trying to contact you, um, and we've just got set up because we understand that you've had an interesting journey this evening. And oh, explain to us yeah. where you were. The, the traffic wasn't great, and an accident, and then guarded checkpoints. You know yourself, so it took a while. Friday evening traffic. Yeah, and um, what what are you actually up to for the weekend? Uh, up for the weekend, or should we have to watch? Uh, bit of racing and uh yeah just chilling out really what's your day today what's my day today uh working in bally doyle in the mornings and uh suppose looking after my little girl then in the afternoons and um other other things that come my way really it being international women's day uh what is uh what's what's your little girl's name and how old is she now uh rosie and she's she'd be two in may so she's flying it now. She's flying around. How did that change her life? Because uh, I suppose we, we all concluded that you were probably riding at your peak when you retired. But um, I guess it, Rosie, was co Rosie was coming along and it was, it was probably a decision that had to be made. Yeah, I suppose all my life um, I was working in racing and um, I was giving it as much as I could, 110%. And, and I loved it. And I loved doing that. And... Uh, and when Rosie came along, um, I just put a new perspective on things. She, I, it was it was fine for the first. I came back racing. I think after four months, I had her, and uh, it was fine. She was a little baby in the corner there that wasn't really. It was just basically sleeping and needing food. And then by the time she got to one, she's she's more open at it and interactive. And I just seen the times like she was basically going to my husband Ted a lot more than she'd come to me because I wasn't really seeing her that much and uh, so I just kind of put things in perspective it was coming into the summer and uh, there's, you, as you know yourself there's 9 o'clock because the bumpers are on in the evenings and it could be 3 or 4 hour drive away from me so um, it was fine during the winter where there was only three three meetings kind of a week and I could work it out and uh, now I kind of went from that and um, I couldn't really take out the summer and come back in the winter really so I just said this is not my time now to, to stop and that's basically how I approached it. It, it must have given you great admiration of your mother uh, Pamela as well considering um, I'd say your house with uh, your dad Tommy was pretty hectic when you were younger. Yeah, like, yeah, I had a great upbringing with loads of ponies around and um, with five brothers as well. So I, <laughs> I got a good um, introduction to, to horses that way, yeah. Nina, the last, the last we saw of you in action was um, on that day in Punchestown. I think it was last April, was it, Jenny, when, when you mm. retired? And, and you retired on a winner, as always, as we knew you would. So tell us, what have you been doing since? Because we know you were riding out today. So what are you at? Yeah, no, I ride out in Bally Doyle in the mornings and, uh, yeah, no, I love that job and um, it's brilliant to work with high-class horses and obviously working under Aidan O'Brien is something special and learning loads and, yeah, I've been there the last five years and really enjoy it. And were you do? Were you working in a sort of a, tra a trainer capacity or assistant trainer capacity with Noel Mead before yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, 
Yeah, I was doing that for a year before I went to Aidens and I really wanted to get to know more about the flat and no better place to go is, is Ballydoyle. So, um, yeah, no, really, really enjoying it and learning loads down there. And so that's in Cashel. Where are you living, Nina? Yeah, Cashel, yeah. And where yeah. are you living then? Is it a long commute? Uh, in Cashel, yeah. Or she's living in. Oh, Cashel you were living down there. Yeah. So, oh, so you're handed. I presume still that you were you were living up in Meather or no, in Kildare no. somewhere. So it's not that far for you to go then. No, no. Right. No. The, the thing with Noel Mead as well was that going to be a long term thing? Um, because I mean, you must have been getting some education as well from Noel. Obviously, you go way back, but could that have grown into something longer term, or was it kind of a? Yeah, I think at the time, yeah, I really wanted to get it. Um, uh, like Noel is, was a brilliant flat trainer at, uh, at the beginning when he started off and uh, he went jumping then and he didn't have many flat at the time and I really wanted to get to know more about the flat and I just said, could I, you know, what, what did you think about me going down to Bally Doyle for a month or so to kind of get the gist of it all and uh, it kind of worked itself out that they didn't offer me a job and um, yeah, I kind of just moved on from there and I just wanted to get to know more about the flat really. And is that five mornings a week, six mornings a week? Yeah, six mornings a week, yeah. And tell us the difference between riding those, what I call, those prima ballerina flat horses and, uh, and national hunt horses. Oh, they're, yeah, like obviously they're, they're a completely different type of, um, they're, you know, ones are a lot quicker and the others are, you know, stanima horses really. Um, obviously the two milers will be quick over jumps, but yeah. um, more or less the, the flat horses are more, more leaner and they're more they're more built for speed really and are they are they temperamentally or does that vary just with every horse it doesn't matter whether they're they're flat or jumps oh, can the they be very be different more boisterous and yeah. they might nip you or you know spock out at you you'd have to be more careful around them they wouldn't be your laid back three mile chaser now you wouldn't like give them a big long rein or anything they go come and <laughs> you'd be holding and tight fight. Yeah, so you'd want to be you want to be on your lookout with them now, but um, yeah, I really enjoy working with the Colts, and that was all new to me, and um, and obviously the really good fillies down there as well. And do, is there is there any particular horse that you really like uh, in Ballydoyle? Yeah, at the minute. Yeah. Um, just to ride like. Them, so. Come on, Nina. Come on. Give us. So, give us you a know couple. when you're riding a horse and you really like yeah. like riding a horse. Um, I rode out Japan there for a while. I liked him, so I look forward to watching him race in the season. What do you make of him actually for the season? He's like the Derby picture looks a bit all over the shop, but he certainly comes into that picture. Yeah, his form is rock solid from last year. I can't see why he can't be in the monks, the the big grade ones this year. So um, definitely, he could easily be a Derby hope. You know, um, I'd be keeping a close eye on him. And I. Do you know what the mad thing is, Tina, when I was down there? I was down for uh, something or other last year, whether it was for the launch of the flat season. But Nina, just if you spend the morning in Ballydoyle, uh, I'd argue it's probably the best concentration of jockeys at any one moment in the country outside of a racetrack. Um, uh, you know, and Ryan Moore isn't even there. Uh, the, the names there, if you could just list off some I of the know. people you're right now with. Unbelievable, yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, Aidan has congregated a, an unbelievable amount of very good jockeys to ride obviously these real top class horses and um yeah there's there's nothing spared and they get the best of everything and um yeah, no, no, the amount of good writers down there is unbelievable now. It's great to be among them. Nina, we, we, it, it is International Women's Day and, and all week there have been loads of women in sport uh, initiatives. One of them was around coaching and I just was interested. Obviously, if you're down there learning your trade and, and learning about flat horses, are you thinking about training full time? Are you, what, what are your thoughts about the future? Yeah, I, I had my license there for a while. My, 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 my dad... Um, they, um, handed in his. Um, I had a winner, um, but then it kind of it kind of progressed that I got the job with Noel as assistant trainer, and I I really enjoyed that. So, yeah, no, I definitely wouldn't rule it out in the future. And yeah, I've obviously gotten a lot of experience from two top trainers, yeah. and uh, yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. You know, in in the in the future. What would what would you worry about it with regard to going down the training route? Uh, obviously, you'd be worried about getting good owners that's the main thing that, <laughs> that will buy these horses yeah. you know you need yeah. you need top class horses to to compete you know i could have seen paul nichols's um article this week on how he um he how he kind of stepped back from buying those big horses in france and he kind of got left behind and he had to get muscle in again and you know and now he's back to where he is where he was 10 years ago you know he's 
back fighting for Cheltenham again, you know. So it took him a while to get back to where he was, where he couldn't compete with, with, with the, the prices the horses were making. But I think it's all about having good owners. You obviously have an eye on the flat as well, like Noel Mead would have had. Um, to be, to have, to, I suppose to go to Ballydoyle must be a pointer that you have an eye on possibly training at least as dual purpose or just flat. Yeah, no, I'd love to get involved in both, yeah, definitely. I wouldn't like just to go down one route. You know, I think I, li- I like the um, the turnover in the, the flat game, whereas you, you, you know a lot quicker. You know what to, like, what, what way they're going to go, whereas at, in the National Hunt, you're waiting a while. So at two, you're, 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 you're moving on. You're going quicker. Everything's fresh every year, whereas in the National Hunt game, everything takes a little bit longer. Nina, you had on Shelton is just around the corner. I think this day week will be Gold Cup Day, won't it? Um, you had se- seven festival winners, I think, over there. Um, will you go? Will you go this year? No, I'm not actually going this year. No, really? um, unfortunately, but I'll be watching it at home. And uh, I know I'm really looking forward to to looking at um, at the whole week. I think it'll be an unbelievable week. There's so much hype about so many different horses. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Irish get and on. How difficult is it? Will it be not to be going? Because I ha- know when is the last time you didn't go? <laughs> I know, I know. But Rosie, I'm off to Cheltenham. You know, bye bye. Time I was playing Rosie, but um, yeah. No, no, I really, I, I enjoy watching it anyway. I watched it for many years, watching Paul and and that and Philip and yeah, no, um, no, I'll enjoy it either way. Do you have a favourite of your wins in Cheltenham? Oh, um, sure. Always your first is is one of the most memorable. Um, Dabaroon, but on the fringe, for me was his first win there was incredible, and I think yeah, that was. Yeah, no, that was something special that day on the fringe winning. How how special was it, Nina? That uh, you know you had four individual lady riders last year winning from twenty eight races, one in seven, um, which is punching way above their weight in terms of the ratio of female to male riders. Uh, but to do it, obviously Harriet Tucker broke her dislocated her collarbone as well in the Fox yeah. Hunters. Yeah. Um, I I just thought it was. Uh, I, I'm very proud of racing. How how much it it, it integrated kind of is. integrated it is. Yeah. But um, that must have been great for the sport, Nina. Brilliant. Like, I think it's the only sport in the world that there's no gender bias. If you're good enough, you, you, you'll get there, you know. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy. You're not... I think in racing, they don't judge you as a girl or a boy. They judge you on your ability, and that's what women strive for, like, you know. And I think it's an industry that, to me, I've never felt any bias. And the men in it, if... They they respect you if you have your ability and it's it's nothing to do with being a girl or a boy and I think like the likes of Jesse and obviously Rachel Blackburn now to get to get the opportunities you'll 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 do it you know you'll get the you'll get there. Did you see a change from when you started off to I suppose when you retired? The, the, like there's been uh, more lady riders maybe coming along the last few years, but was was that acceptance for you always there? I know you were way above average in terms of where you came from, but did you find any change of trends or in terms of mindset? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, uh, myself and Katie came back came from racing backgrounds, which was mm. a massive help. Mm. We had a massive. Um, Start, you know, we had people telling us straight away what we were doing wrong, you know, and yeah. um, that's why I admire the likes of Rachel, who didn't really have a, a background. They're listening to your, you're, you're listening to your friends, and you know, they're expecting them to help you out or whatever. So, we had um, our parents, kind of, who have been steeped in racing, and uh, that was a massive help for us to get going. And then. Katie got in with Willie and I got in with Noel and kind of went from there and we were we were able to show what we could do. But it, it was all about getting the opportunity at the start and obviously the ladies' races helped helped me in a way, never mind Katie, but it helped me a lot to get going and the point-to-point scene had a lot of point, uh, ladies' races as well. So that helped me getting the opportunities to, to go jumping and getting the experience. And, um, and then Enda one day rang... Uh, he said he didn't realise that the Open one day was a was a, was a ladies' race. So JT Bulger. was obviously lined up to to ride this horse, Shady Lad, and he rang me to ride it. And I said, "Geez, I love to ride it." And um, that kind of opened the door for me into Enders. So everything was a stepping stone from ladies' races for me. And uh, my first winner was for Noel Mead. So. 
things uh, helped me with the ladies' races. So you could nearly say that that, that helped me a lot. And, so you think um, you think it's important to keep ladies' races uh, from from the point of developing jockeys as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. It, it, it definitely didn't do me any harm. It helped me a lot to get contacts, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, no, definitely the ladies' races helped me, and at least shows then that the trainers give you give you a go and they'll they'll see if you're able to ride and and once you show that you you're a good seven pound claimer they they're not afraid of putting you up against the lads she mentioned rachel blackmore there um clean like rachel blackmore whether she was a man or a woman the where she left the amateur uh setup uh you know i remember when she became a professional and i literally didn't meet one person who thought it made any sense because yeah, she was seemingly came. yeah like she was going nowhere as an amateur but she she hadn't really struck many people as being particularly able because she wasn't getting many winners and she was mm. kind of Nina, I, I just you mentioned it there as well. It's probably something that's not made. She wasn't really bred for the job like the Carberries or the Walshes or whatever. No. She came and it's just what an achievement. She's still in with this, you know, a fighting chance winning the jockey title this year, which I think is quite incredible. Yeah, I I definitely utmost respect for her and how she put her head down and and drove for what she wanted and had Shark behind her to to uh, support her. Um, Obviously, her decision to turn was that she wasn't going anywhere where she was going and getting no money and getting knocked about on the point of points. And she's light as a feather. So it made no sense, really, for her to keep doing that. So obviously, the Sharks saw the opportunity that she could do 9, 10 and claim off 7. So it made more sense for her to turn and be up against professionals, being looked after a lot more and um, do lightweights. And next thing, she found her niche and she flew because people see, see, she was about 25, I think, when she she turned and she had all that experience under her. She wasn't green at all. She knew exactly where to be in a race and she went from there and next thing she started to fly and everyone kind of jumped on the bandwagon and her, her claim was gone. <laughs> yeah. and, and then when, she landed a, kind of a lot of the rides for Gigasan mm, and now she's yeah. flying. Yeah. So, and when you look at her, Nina, what do you see as her talent, I mean, particular talent? Because she's just got a phenomenal uh, return rate. Oh, being able to focus and just keep the head down and keep going and the amount of toughness she has. Uh, no, I admire her so much and keeping things simple in a race as well. I've watched her a lot and she rarely gets beat on a horse that should win. So I feel they jump very well for her and uh, she keeps things simple. You mentioned Jigginstown there. Like Jigginstown would have used... Um, they've, Michael O'Leary's been massive in terms of her career, but he gave Lisa O'Neill two rides in Kerry yeah. Nationals. She won successive Kerry Nationals, which yeah. is astonishing. He's going. not afraid yeah, at all putting up girl. Like, there's just... There's no bias at all, I feel, yes, in if, racing. If they think you can win, they think you can win. Exactly, yeah. And I feel the gig and sound, they, they, they just... If someone's lucky for you, they'll keep going. You know, they don't, they won't, you know, like, it's like anything. If you're, if you're lucky for someone, you know, they're going to keep you on. And Rachel's been very, very lucky all year. And please God, she stays injury free for the rest of the season. Well, she, she features strongly in, in the recent um, Jump Girls, uh, the documentary, and TJ Cahar and yourself and Katie featured in it, and Lisa O'Neill, and lots of women. What I thought was really nice about that, Nina, was that he, he set out to do, I think, a story maybe about, about women in, in racing, but it turned out to be just a story about people in racing. And I think people who watched it would have not, think, not have seen you as women, but just been fascinated about how hard people work in racing and that your gender yeah. wasn't, a ma wasn't a factor. Yeah, I thought they, they it came across very well and it showed everybody in racing really, yeah. like the parents, like especially yeah. Nisa O'Neill's parents, like the, like how when she got the fall in Cheltenham and, you know, you're just, you don't know what, you, you, you go through that when you're watching it, like, oh God, I wonder is she okay, you know, and, that's the way it is, like, you know, you're just hoping everyone's going to be okay and, you know, whatever about success, at the end of the day, you're hoping people will be okay and I think they portrayed it very well and that that um, it is an up and down industry. Yeah, and even as you said, with with the difference between between uh, Rachel Blackmore and Lisa Neal from you and Katie, where you came from families who were used to watching, watching you taking risks the whole way up and probably put you on horses when you were very young, it's nearly harder for their families even to watch that as well. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't understand. Yeah, you haven't been through before or anything like that and they don't know who to go to or whatever. So, yeah, no, I think it, it, it portrayed the whole industry like it is. Just, just one thing, Nina. Um, I, I would argue there probably should be more um, 
young girls getting into flat riding. You know, we saw Emma Doyle win at Dundalk on her first ever ride for her dad, Tim. That was a great story. Yeah. But, um, it, I don't know, it's probably just a, 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 a fluke, really. But if you look at Britain, we'll say, you look at Holly Doyle, um, Poppy Bridgewater, uh, obviously uh, Hayley Turner, uh, I'm, I'm uh, Josephine Gordon. So you have all these writers making a big kind of claim. I mm. haven't seen that as much on the flat for some reason in Ireland. We obviously had uh, Aidan O'Brien, you know, had two daughters who were riding. Obviously, Anna got injured on the flat. But yeah. do you think there should be, there should be, I don't know, promotion of getting more girls involved? Or why hasn't there been more? I don't know. It's probably waves, but you can't force it either, Johnny. Mm. Um, like, you either have the ability or you don't. And... Uh, you can teach them all what they can be taught, and to be honest, like if you if you're not good enough, you're it doesn't matter. To, you know, it doesn't mm. matter if you're a girl or boy. Is you, you just don't get there, you know. So you can't force it either. Like they're going to have to have the talent as well. So it's probably just the case of. Not, nothing's come around at the minute, you know, mm-hmm. and there's probably not the opportunities in Ireland as there is in England with the racing, you know, there's probably just at the minute where Cathy Gannon, she had yeah, the talent Cathy and she got there, there from yeah, nowhere. So yeah, yeah. it just shows you that... Again, a completely non, non-racing background, didn't she? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, completely. Yeah. And she yeah. went to race, went through the academy and she, she got to the top and got top apprentice, so... I always, I always presumed, Johnny. I must be wrong. I always presumed maybe it was a weight issue with flat racing that it was harder for women to do the weight. No, it wouldn't be. It, it, it wouldn't in, be fact, in fact, it's quite, yeah, the, it's quite the opposite actually. Because easier. so this, this, this is a, an argument ah. that I've made. Um, now I've more or less borrowed the argument from someone else. But like, uh, lads are going to get too tall to ride on the flat in Ireland unless the weights are brought up. A lot of lads are just like you have a situation in America now where there are very few native uh, US riders. They're basically all coming from South America. So that was the thing I thought, Nina. That it, over time, if if weights don't ride. It'll, it'll be more of um, a an thing. Advantage where to it be, will be an to advantage. Be a woman. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. On the and flat, I always said this kind of. It, it might be. I might be discriminating here a bit too, and I say, but I always thought there were some horses, and this is kind of. I don't know if this is being counter sexist or what, but I thought. <laughs> I thought we'll female. You, Danny, I thought female <laughs> riders got on better with particular horses for certain reasons. Just I don't know. Was it just kindness or hands? Um, maybe it's individual to the person. But does, is there any kind of truth in what I'm saying there, Nina? That yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Every horse is different, and, and definitely, even trainers would say putting up a girl on a horse at home that doesn't want to be bullied, you know, or even in a race, if you're, you know, sometimes, and it's. I, I know I, Paul rode very sympathetically as well. He wouldn't be one that would be bullying. So you could often say that the men would ride very sympathetic as well. But um, yeah, don't, definitely some horses would go better for a girl. And um, obviously they probably wouldn't be as strong in a finish. And um, because of that, the horse might run on better. Do you know? Or do you know with hands and heels? Like you know? So yeah, definitely, Johnny. The horses would run better for for a girl. Did, did, did you regress? Not going pro. Yeah, that was my question. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, at one stage yeah, I was. I, I'd had the winner in, on Dabaroon and I was claiming five and it was probably my time to think was it going to turn and I was half thinking of it and I talked to Dad and uh, Paul about it and he, um, at the time um, Slippers was amateur to Noel and uh, uh, Niall Madden was amateur to Noel mm-hmm. and um, he had plenty of uh, plenty of jockeys at the time along with Paul I think Dennis O'Regan was there as well and then Niall turned professional from being an amateur and Noel came to me and he said he'd love me to be his amateur and so I had to go back and think again of what to do and I basically told him I was thinking of turning and I wanted to be an apprentice as well and he said it's up to yourself, but um, I feel I can give you plenty of opportunities as an amateur. And I kind of thought about it, and I'd have a ride at, a- at Cheltenham every year, and, you know... I think I you're underselling of... yourself there, though. Like, I mean, one way to Cheltenham, you could have... If, if Rachel Blackmore is doing what she's doing, you had the capabilities to do even better, probably. Yeah, it's hard to know. Um, I was kind of running out my claim of five. Um, yeah, it's hard to know. Uh, obviously, I went down the amateur route... Because I was, I was going to have those bumper horses, so it was probably a safety net for me. Whereas I don't think Rachel had nothing to lose to turn, you know. Yeah, whereas I, yeah. if I turned, I would have been losing probably the job as an amateur, and going back, and probably if it didn't happen, 
I probably would have, you know, I yeah. probably wouldn't have been able to turn back. So. I think you have some regrets. Pardon? I think you might have some I regrets. I never realised you came that close. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought yeah. you, I never realised yeah. you thought that no, seriously I don't, about actually. it. I think I love, no, obviously now there's probably more opportunities than might have because, but I still don't regret being able, I still probably wouldn't have had my seven winners in Cheltenham. Like, you know, yeah. I just realistically, you probably wouldn't. You and, know? And, and 398, so, nearly 400 across National Hunt and yeah, winners, that's yeah, what you had. So, yeah. No, Amazing. I don't have any regrets. Obviously, at the time, I was thinking that way, right. but no, I don't have any regrets that way. Um, Johnny, she's not in Cheltenham either in person or as a jockey, and there was, there's always one rule in Cheltenham, or always was one, one rule in Cheltenham. There was always a banker for the bookies, what are they going to do without her? <laughs> yeah, the well, well, that was the thing. Like, <laughs> what Nina, are they going to do? But Nina, Nina, was, uh, Nina got so many men out of jail in Ireland, like, you know, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. <laughs> and because possibly women as well. It was mainly men punted. now, because um, <laughs> women are generally a lot more sensible than men. They don't <laughs> exactly, bet on the bumper. Exactly, in terms of punting, yeah. um, But the, Nina was always right, or invariably right in the favourite, and basically, I always used to marvel at the fact that there was a lady rider in the bumper, but we all wanted Nina to be on the favourite. Nina in the bumper because she and was the Nina best. in the fox chase. And uh, Jesus, yeah. she, you know, Amazing. but Nina's Nina's very modest being from the Carberries, but Nina was a gifted, gifted rider, and she would would have been way better than a lot of the pros. And mm -hmm. um, Paul would have said she was, you know, right up there with him in terms of ability. And when Nina rode in a race, it was. In a, you could never tell, and this was this has kind of gone a bit obsolete now. Um, you know, saying that you couldn't tell it was a girl, but Nina just had she's, she's the most polished, beautiful style, very strong in the finish, brilliant, brilliant rider. Patrick Mullen said she was the hardest, hardest jockey to pass. In yeah, <laughs> like Nina, Nina was Nina was more talented to me than Bryony Frost, Rachel Blackmore, Lisa O'Neill, any Katie, even Katie Walt. Nina was the best lady I've ever seen riding, and um, hasn't been surpassed. And um, if she had turned pro, she would have had a great career. The fact that she didn't is really neither here nor. There now, but um, I, th she will be massively missed at Cheltenham because she was a big part of it. Yeah, huge, mm. huge part of it. Um, and 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 why did why did you ride so well over over um, in, in those cross country races? And why did you love them so much? It helped that you were riding for Enda Bulger. Yeah, the horses. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, Enda Bulger. Um, I, I talked uh, I talked a bit about Shady Lad, and he was my first ride around the banks in Punchtown, and uh, so that's how that. That uh, door up opened up, and uh, I never forget my. I got a picture. I think he finished second on the first time around there. I was on him, and uh, I got a picture of the bank down the bottom, and my hands are <laughs> my hands are up over my ears, nearly coming <laughs> off the bank. And my mother sent it on to Enda. Well, Enda nearly died. He was like, "Oh Jesus, what are you doing with your hands?" So from then on, I was like, "Oh God, I better start." You know. You know, tidy myself up, or I need to be. You know, so I was actually went down to Enders every Friday to ride out, and it taught me so much. And schooled and, and uh, schooled on banks, did you? Pardon? Did you school on banks then? Was yeah, that yeah. Hard? So we got a great education on on the in the Limerick. Um, I did say the outback, and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, brilliant, brilliant education, and I learned very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and even even as somebody who doesn't punt, they're just such beautiful races to watch. They're like oh, back brilliant. to just cross country chasing anybody yeah. who's ever ridden anything over over a, over a fence the, as a the kid. Other thing just as well. yeah, you just tell them there. Everyone just flocks to the inside yeah. when, when, in, the, yeah. when the race is on, and you yeah. get the atmosphere so much when you ride around there, and it's so nice because you can actually enjoy the race a lot more because it's so it's quite long race, yeah. and mm. you pass the. You pass the crowd about three times, and it's um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's so it's a great special race. Well, it it's looks it looks like you're enjoying it, so that's really interesting to hear. You actually are enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially when a jumper like that doesn't make a mistake, or you know, <laughs> rarely makes a mistake. They know what they're doing. You just sit there, and it's really it's enjoyable. Yeah, Pe people people knock those races because you know the, um, they they're obviously a bit idiosyncratic. But I I, I always thought Nina like it really showcased the talents of a horse to be able to adapt to such various obstacles. Like you're. It's it's almost like you're jumping off a wall one time, then you're yeah. you're hopping a hurdle from a human perspective, and yeah, um, they have to be very adaptable and no, very be sure-footed and like the likes of Garda Champetra who'd who'd reach a mark over fences, and he wasn't going to go much further after that, and he went cross country. And he cleaned up, mm. and it was a new, it was a new lease of life for him and a new career for him, and um, it was great to be able to ride him and to 
Uh, yeah, to be on him, and to, he was enjoying it so much. He didn't probably enjoy the fences that much, and he just loved loved jumping the the hedges well, and the, the banks. And he it strikes me like as well that uh, Johnny was saying it, it actually showcases the best of a jockey as well. Oh, you yeah. have to be incredibly adaptable as well, don't you? I suppose, yeah. Like, yeah, you have to have the, probably a bit of experience around the banks and stuff. And um, yeah, the hunting helped me a lot at the start as well. What, what way to be over bank? So yeah, no, that was all. Yeah, um, no. Well, look at Friday night racing is brought to you here by GoRacing.ie. Um, Nina, are you are you looking at Cheltenham? Is there something that you would have as a banker then if you were looking at Cheltenham this year? Um, I've always been a massive fan of Sir Eric, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him running. And I hope that he is Ireland's banker and he'll go and, and do it. I've always been a massive fan. He was in Bally Doyle as a young horse and uh, yeah, no, he was, I was always looking at him thinking, oh, he'd be a lovely bump of horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're eyeing him. <laughs> and uh, then he went on and he was, he was, he went jumping. So it was great to see, to see JP have him and uh, to go to jumping route and he's still a full horse. So it's quite exciting to see if he does go and win, you know, it'd be great to have a, to have a ho- full horse go jumping. And also, before I let you go, when you're in Ballydoyle and you're there riding out every day, you also know how important the stable staff, how much of an interest they will be taking and the crack that will be there for the week when they're watching Cheltenham. Oh, yeah, there's loads of camaraderie and who's going to win this and who, what, what do you fancy in this? Yeah, no, it's a great buzz and everyone, everyone just sits down and watches Cheltenham. Like, it doesn't matter if you're flat or jumping, yeah, they all love it. Well, listen, you won't be there, um, but obviously you're still, we're delighted to hear you're still riding and really interested to see what will happen in the future. We might, uh, I, I, I suspect it sounds to me like she's going to be training, she's going to be back in, inside in the paddock in future years. I have one more. Um, oh, Johnny has one last question. I have one here. last question. So I, I could really tell you were kind of half, you know, getting a bit emotional there when you were saying Rosie was going to TED over you. Did you address the balance there? <laughs> She's stuck to me now. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, no, she's great. <laughs> All no right, problem. Nina, listen, lovely to talk to you and best of luck with everything. Minute. Thanks, clean up. Thanks, Johnny. Now, Johnny, um, look at brilliant, brilliant to, but I mean, you could just still hear the enthusiasm in her voice. Oh, you know just an, like that family, um, Paul was the most gifted rider I've ever seen. Nina was the most gifted lady rider uh, I've ever seen uh, over jumps. I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. Um, Paul, uh, it's hard to describe Paul in terms of uh, when when Yates spoke about how do you tell the dancer from the dance, it was hard to tell the artist from Separate the Separate him from the horse. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Paul would do things in a race that would literally have you wondering whether you were actually, you know, whether you were still suffering the effects from, of the light before because you were <laughs> like, did I just see what he did there? Um, but he would make bad horses think they were Nijinsky and, the, you know, a famous story of um, Derma Well asking a friend of mine to bring a horse that he was working with to Galway and he said, I'm not bringing that horse, he can't jump, I'm not wasting my day going to Galway. Paul Carberry rode him, he won on the bridle. Um, Paul was gifted, but yeah. Nina, like Nina, Nina would have... The only thing was, it was probably rare enough for professional lady riders um, until sort of Rachel and well, Brian. Well, that's the thing, you see, mm. they broke the mould at amateurs, really, herself and Katie, and now you have um, you have you have Rachel breaking it as a professional. Yeah. Like once somebody does it and they're really successful, trainers then just just don't don't ever think about it. I think they just go with whoever's they, gender doesn't matter. Whoever's best, put them up on the horse. No, and I, I think you you asked for you asked Nina what uh, Rachel's best after you was. I think. Rachel has an incredible work ethic and she's very reliable. Uh, I wouldn't say she's as talented as some of the other riders in Ireland, which is no disgrace because we have the best riders in the world probably. But she's she's very talented, doesn't really make mistakes at all, and she is very reliable. And a lot of a lot of jockeys with the with the nature of the game that they're in, they you know they're not necessarily reliable. They wouldn't have that work ethic. Well, she she said it because she said she heard her she said she said she puts her head down and she keeps going and yeah. that's that work ethic. Keep driving on, keep driving. On. So the amount of horses she's ridden this year, incredible, is and she's unbelievable. She's reluctant to give interviews because I think she's so fearful of getting ahead of herself or seen to be getting ahead of herself in relation to the jockeys championship, which she probably won't win. But she's she's still there with a the fighting second, chance. Yeah, and yeah. Um, it'd be incredible if she went to punch a sound with some sort of a chance because I think she'd get a lot of backing because um, a woman to win the uh, the champion jockey thing would be incredible. But Nina's article, or Nina's interview was so refreshing there because, um, you know, the, the argument that, you know, we're all striving for equality, but like she's so refreshing when she says a lot of women haven't become jockeys because they weren't good enough or they weren't strong enough in the finish. Like, 
fair enough. If, if, if like it's almost you can't say certain things now. Like you know, a woman is less likely to be strong in a finish, or a man as a man, or you know, black guys ba basically run faster than white guys mainly. You know, we, we we're not. It's almost like we're not able to say that. But we know that in racing. Um, 50 50 more or less is staff split gender balance and in I, stables, in stables. Yeah. And I don't see I don't see any um, kind of inequality towards the attitude towards female riders or female trainers because we all know how good they are yeah. and we don't care we just want to get results and, and we I know think, and I think Rachel Blackmore as well doesn't want to get brought into that debate about being a woman she's trying to say yeah as they always did as well look I'm, I'm, I'm a jockey end of story it's, it's I'm a when, jockey it's when we get to the stage where we don't actually we don't say it anymore. Yeah, it's not exactly, it's not absolutely. as as it, yeah. it was like when Willie Mullins was talking about Rachel. She's not a lady rider. She's a good rider. Yeah, exactly. You know, we had a poll there during the week where um, people were asked would they would they um, would they have a bet on a team if it were managed by a woman and over uh, an overwhelming minority said they wouldn't. There's a lot of stupidity out there. There's a lot of um, caveman attitude to things that we need to get by. But in racing, I think. Whether we like it or not, we're light years ahead of other sports in and terms that, of gender and that, equality and, that and balance. And the notion about women sometimes not not being as strong in the finish. You talking about being as physically yeah, strong, but hasn't he, Rachel Blackmore yeah. hasn't Rachel Blackmore um, proved that to be wrong? Even even that is even that's kind of a bit of a generalisation because yeah. I don't think Nina. First of all, strength in the finish is way overrated. It's, it's she a, heard it's say that tactics, basically. tactics, and um, getting the horse to jump and getting the horse relaxed are far more important. Strength in the finish only matters for a select number of horses, and in any event. Um, um, it's it's the last part of the race. It's not the most important uh, in in my in my view. Um, Nina in a finish, flawless. Like and uh, you know she. And what was she was saying there was sometimes it's not about strength. It's about how you're riding the horse. Absolutely. It's how you're getting them to go through the line. Horses are not machines yeah. that you have to get a manual to figure yeah. them out. Yeah. They're very very complex creatures and they click with certain riders. And uh, if you we, we're in, we're in an extraordinary position at the moment where you look at the likes of Josephine Gordon, Bryony Frost is a beautiful beautiful love style on yeah, a horse. Love um, she I I genuinely believe Bryony gets a tune out of horses that male jockeys just can't get. I don't know if it's her loose rein style. She's a very unique handing of the reins. Um, she's very positive on horses she, without being forceful. And maybe again, I'm buying into the gener generalities here, but Bryony's a brilliant rider. And we're going to have a situation, perhaps in the Ryanair chase, where Bryony and um, Rachel are going to be on two fancied horses in Frodon and Mount Lee. And um, we won't have Nina, but we'll have that. And we'll have Lisa O'Neill riding um, some good horses as well. Um, but I, I, I think it's, it's just something racing still doesn't promote enough in that. In France, a couple of years ago, they brought in uh, an, brought allowance in an allowance for females. Right? Yeah, I was, and there was quite a lot of controversy over I was totally against that. Yeah, that's, yeah, I remember that. That's effectively saying you're inferior to yeah. me. Now, they would say it's, it's given opportunities. It's like positive um, discrimination. It's to positive discrimination. To, to make sure more, more, more trainers would give them a chance. Yeah, like a human, like apprentices are a human. To and me, did it have any effect? Um, it, it did. I think they actually redressed it because uh, the females were, were getting more of a, you know, they were giving them a five pound advantage or whatever it was. So, so that's basically like giving a team a goal start and Away or a couple of points start in football, so it wasn't fair. But I don't want um, us to be telling female riders you're worse than the males because you're not. In fact, a lot of the time you're better. Now we're, now we're and and you see Jessica Harrington, 71 years of age, um, she had her first Gold Cup winner two seasons ago. She had her first Irish Grand National uh, winner, her first Gold Cup winner with her first uh, runner in the race. And I think the same year she turned up at Cheltenham. Um, in a, in a sling because she'd been injured skiing and she's back on a horse in her seventies. That's the women I want to hear about in racing. Yeah, it's not funny. the best dressed lady. Yeah, well, ex well, <laughs> don't even start me. Um, uh, just interesting, but actually, but talking about Paul Carby and about the Carbys and what they grew up doing. I remember one time being over. Um, anybody who knows anything about sort of um, hunter chasing and that will know Charlie O'Neill's yard down in uh, outside Clane. And um, there's all there was always a big hunter chase or a hunter trials there on a, a Good Friday. And I went down one day, and it wasn't a racing day. And there's Paul Carberry tearing around on a horse. Well, Paul, <laughs> on his day off, technically, you know, the one day off the week he probably had off racing, he's down doing hunter trials. Paul, Paul can definitely uh, sue me for defamation now if he wants. <laughs> but I do think he was injured riding a stag one time, or certainly he got up on a stag yes. um, at the hunt. And Did he get injured going skiing one year as well, and all kinds yeah. of things he shouldn't have been doing. Yeah. Anyone that knows Paul would say <laughs> that the stag story was probably pretty light compared to some of the stories. He would do anything. He was a daredevil. He still is. Uh, Sometimes when you talk to him, there's almost like a kind of a loss in Paul because he's not riding anymore. And he, he retired because he kind of had to. He was pretty broken up. Um, but was, was Nina much worse than Paul? Absolutely not. And uh, Nina did more 
to my mind, for our attitude towards women in riding horses than anyone because she was so bloody good. It was just like, well, God, if I want Nina riding it, I don't want, if you wanted any horse to ride in a bumper when she was around, yeah, it was well, Nina was Carberry. Yeah. And she was not, not the 58 men that could have been uh, riding the favourite. We wanted Nina Carberry because she was the best. Yeah, well, she'd be missed, definitely she'd be missed because in Cheltenham, that was always everybody's banker, definitely. Um, you're listening to Friday Night Racing here and it's brought to you by GoRacing.ie. And the Tote in Irish Indoor Jockeys Charity Fund remains at 2000. Ah, uh, come here. You're, you're, getting, you're getting the jar terminology here. Remains, <laughs> stay stubbornly, uh, stuck ass, you know. Bloody hell, like, clean. I thought you were going to be easy on me. <laughs> well, it remains. I'm saying it remains there at uh, just over 2000 uh, euro, 2014. Exactly, point for it. What's your point? Well, uh, just the weekend, the action is coming up at uh, NACE, and we want you to have a chat and tell us, uh, give us a few tips on these things. I'm going to, right, right, I'm going to give There's my... a hundred, is there a hundred pound bet, courtesy of the toe, to try to add to that? Try to. Yeah, to try yeah. to. Well, now look, that's, you know. Well, this week we will add to it in the big race at NACE, so I'll get to my nap first. Um, which runs in the 345. We have a situation here where the mayor in the race, Camelia de Cot, um, she's actually a seven year old filly, but she's giving way to Kaiser Black, um, who's quite well named because he's by Germany, who is the stallion of Faheen and, Ger and uh, Sam Crow, who could have been running against each other in the World Hurdle next week. But Kaiser Black, I don't think he's flattered by his run behind another mayor, Labago Roy, at uh, Leopardstown. I think he is a good thing in the 345 at Nace, and hopefully. We won't be as stubbornly stuck on whatever it is after that. And that's your that's your that's your bet. That's your tip for that one. Okay. So what about the rest of the weekend then? Yeah. So Saturday we've a tricky card at Gore and um, finally got a bit of rain as well this week, clean and a bit of snow, which was uh, quite badly needed. Um, I know the weather is nuts, but we did need rain and Gore and I think is a little bit on the soft side. Uh, we've a good handicap chase, uh, three forty at Gorn. Um, that's a fifty grand race. Interesting to see how Dolce and no, Dietschy goes on there for Willie Mullins. He's been a bit disappointing, but my nap is probably not the most original selection in the world, uh, but he runs earlier on in the card, and that's from Eden for uh, Gordon Elliott in the 305. And also on Saturday, we have the Imperial Cup, um, and this was the real kind of precursor to Cheltenham race, the Saturday before Cheltenham, and sometimes you could win this, and it would bring you into one of the... Go, yeah, yeah bring you into win. one of the handicaps. Um, so I, I'm not sure of its relevance towards Cheltenham this year, but the top weight, call me Lord, very interesting for Daryl Jacob from Wexford and Nicky Henderson, who was also one of the people who uh, Connor sketches did a uh, little. He does very good, Nicky Henderson. Yeah, very good, Nicky. <laughs> so, um, and what about uh, Sandown and Nace then at the weekend? Yeah, so it's a Nace in on Sunday, back to Nace, um, possibly your local track. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah it Crack is. Crack and race track. Um, Punchestown is nearly. Punchestown yeah. is actually closer to me. You, you, you certainly have the best tracks in your doorstep. Yeah. Uh, we also have the Leinster National, uh, which is uh, another, I think it's a 100 grand race and a very, very tricky race for punters. I would tentatively be with Rachel's Mount, Ruishmore, 10 stone one for Joseph O'Brien. Okay, and is that your, is that the lot for the weekend then? That's it. I can't burden you with any more pain. <laughs> um, but good good to get out. If you're not going to Cheltenham, um, I must give a mention to Brendan Duke as well. Brendan Duke is uh, son of the trainer of that name. He's a well-known media personality. Not well enough known because he should be uh, probably on more um, media than he is. But he's told me all week, I'm not, I can't go to Cheltenham. You know, I just can't go to Cheltenham. You know, it's going to be a bit pricey. And I asked him today in the racing post, are you going to Cheltenham? No. I went out the door. He texted me. Something's changed. I'm going to Cheltenham. So uh, Brendan Duke will be there. And Brendan, you, Brendan yeah. is going to be there. Brendan will be there. Just, just, just finally, before we finish up, does Cheltenham ever get old for you? Uh, it does act actually on the Friday every year because you're like, God, I don't know if I can uh, live anymore. It's getting so tired. <laughs> it's really tired. It's and gone even, very long. It is. Even if you're like, I prefer the three day festival being honest, but even if you're working there, and I, I generally just, I, I work, I can't really socialize. It's just, I'm not able to do, not able to burn the candle both ends anymore. And um, you're very, very tired by the Friday. I was sort of toggling with the idea of uh, extending the weekend. I'm going to Liverpool game on this Sunday against Burnley, so I'm going over oh. for the week. And I, I was looking at prices for Ireland and Wales and the rugby just for a bit of a jolly on the... Not, I'm not really into rugby, but it's a jolly up on the Saturday. And the tickets were 130 quid when I looked. I think they've gone up two or three times in price since Wales oh, beat England. Definitely. But I just, I just said to myself, by the time Friday night comes, all I want to do is go home. Um, but while you're there, it's the best show on earth.
is it? Yeah, Still. it's great crack. It's great crack. <laughs> All right, well, look, at there'll be lots of yards around the country who will really be enjoying it, you know, and they'll have the well, they'll have riders there, they'll have jockeys there, they know, and it's a special week, I think, yeah. for everybody involved in Irish and, and safe, uh, safe trips to everyone, obviously jockeys over, and trainers as well. And, yeah. and just, I hope everyone comes back safe and sound, you know, it, it can be a tough festival as well. It's You're riding at the top of, uh, you're riding in a dangerous sport um, at the top of your profession, and uh, let's hope everyone comes back um, safe and sound. Great. Well, that's it from um, Friday Night Racing. Thanks, Johnny, and thanks again to Nina Carter. We'll have you on again. <laughs> Friday Night Racing. On Off The Ball. And they're off. Brought to you by Go Racing. Plan your day at the races at goracing.ie.